is bad at tasting you. What? Oh, All right, so what am I doing? 48. 48. Yeah. 48. 48. You got it? Oh, All right. 48. For Shad. I want to create it. Okay, someone told me when they came in they forgot how to find tangent lines. So here's a little refresher. Take the derivative. Since I have a fraction, I have to do the quotient rule, right? So it's low, B high, minus high, B low, over the square of what below. Okay. Okay? All right, then what we're using that for is if we're going to come up with a tangent line, we need to find the slope at this particular point. So this is the slope of the curve at any point. How do I find the slope at this particular point? Plug in 1. So y prime of 1 is going to be 1 times e to the first minus e to the first over 1. What's that? Zero because one e to the first minus e to the first is zero. Zero divided by one is zero. Okay, so now you can do the old point slope form y minus e equals zero times x minus one. But zero times x minus one is just zero. So y minus e equals zero, or better yet, y equals e is the equation of the Zach, did you want me to go back and pick up number 47? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't intending to be humorous, but uh, you guys got it? Yeah. Let me win, Zach. Okay. All right. Coach Hawks is being really nice today, by the way, everyone. Okay, so uh, same deal you have here, right? To find an equation of the line, I need the slope and I need a point. I have the point, I need the slope. How do I get the slope? Take the derivative. You know, this time I have to use the product rule because I have an x here and I have an x there. Right? Um, so I'm going first one, and I'm the derivative of the second. What's the derivative of cosine pi x? Okay, it's going to be negative sine pi of x. I am not, but then I have to also multiply by the derivative of pi of x. So I have to multiply that by pi. Okay, so that is the first one times the derivative of the second one. Why do you multiply it by pi? Chain rule. If you don't, it doesn't work. Uh, it's really smart. It's really intelligent. It's really complicated. Okay, plus the second one, cosine pi of x times the derivative of the first. What's the derivative of e to the 2x? 2 e to the 2x. Where did the 2 come from? From the chain rule derivative of the 2x. Okay? Alright, so that's my derivative and it looks like a mess, but what do I... Uh, Plug in. Yeah, I'm just going to plug in zero. Um, if I plug zero into here, sine of zero is zero. So this whole term is going to just be zero and cancel out. Nobody cares. Okay. If I plug zero into here, cosine of zero is one. This is going to be one times two is. So my slope at x equals 0 is 2. Therefore, the equation is y, y minus 1 equals 2 times x minus 0. So y minus 1 equals 2x or y equals
Okay, this time we have a closed interval, so we are, you have to think of uh, a graph and it goes from x equals negative 1 to x equals 4, and it does some crazy thing, okay? And what they want us to do is they want us to find the highest point and the lowest point of just this slice of the graph, all right? So not only might this happen inside the graph, but since we're just looking at this slice of it, it could happen at the endpoints also. So to figure out what our absolute maximum and absolute minimum plug in are, one. You have to plug in these points. Nice. Okay. Negative. Hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. Hold on. Back away. Back away. So negative one and four are the endpoints of the graph here and here, and then two is the thing that we found by setting the derivative equal to zero. So what do you plug those values into? What do you plug those values into? The original equation, okay, do that. Okay, so this comes out to be 0 0.8825. This comes out to be? 1.2. 1.2 what? Okay, good enough. And this one is? 0.5413. Okay, 0.5413. So our minimum is? 4. 4. 0.5413 and our maximum is 2 1.213. Okay? Uh, and I guess it just wants the maximum and minimum, so it just wants the y values for this particular question. Alright, uh, anything else from that assignment? What's the difference between what do you do for 65 and 66? You have to find way more crap. I mean, stuff. Just. You want to do that? Yeah. Let's try 65. Okay, so for 65 and 66, we've got to find the intervals that it's increasing and decreasing on the intervals where it's concave up and concave down, and the uh, points of inflection. Okay? Yeah, so this is a pretty uh, long, well, take them off. It's like triple or triple. Uh, not triple. Oh, yeah. Seconds, yeah. You have to go second. Okay, shh, shh. Focus, refocus. I'm taking the marshmallows away. Um, okay, so how do I take the derivative of that function? Product rule. So I'm going to go the first one. Times the derivative of the second, what's the derivative of e to the negative x? But then we have to multiply by the derivative of negative x. So it's going to be negative e to the negative x. Okay, so that's the first one times the derivative of the second, plus the second one times the derivative of the first is what? What's the derivative of the first? Negative 1. Okay? Now, since, as Tyson said, we're going to end up taking like the 15th derivative, I'm going to simplify this a little bit before I go on. If I distribute the negative e to the negative x, 1 times negative e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x. Then this is going to give me plus x e to the negative x, and this is going to give me minus e to the negative x. Does that all make sense? Okay, Um, what if that open? I knew it wasn't going to. I'll have that. All right, so I can combine some like terms there and get negative 2e to the negative x plus xe to the negative x, okay? So what do I need to do with that to find out where it's increasing and decreasing? Not graphing it. What? Factor out an e to the negative x. And set it equal to zero. Good. So that's going to be uh, x minus two equals zero. I just took out a plain old e to the negative x. Okay. Um, this will never be zero. This will be zero at two. X equals two. So that means I can make my little uh, sign chart. Pick a number to the left or the right of uh, two. I don't care what it is. 
You want to go one? I don't want to go one. Mine's on zero. Yeah. Okay. So if you take zero and you plug it into the derivative, uh, because of this x right here, this thing will be zero, right? And then e to the negative zero is one. Negative two times one is what? Negative two. So when we plug in zero, we got a negative. So that means on this interval it is decreasing, and on this interval over here it is increasing. Okay. So the answer to part A is uh, what do they want? Increase or decrease? It's increasing from two to infinity, and it's decreasing from negative infinity to two. Okay. You good with that? Okay, uh, what do I do now? Concavity, which means I need to do the second derivative. So somebody, well, so the first derivative was negative 2 e to the negative x plus x e to the negative x. Is that right? Okay, uh, do you want to take the derivative of that in that form or do you want to try the factored form? Factored form. So we factor that e negative, negative x times x minus 2. Okay, yeah, so product rule again. So it's kind of like what we started with in the first place. So, right, first one times the derivative of the second one, and the derivative of x to the negative x minus 2 is just 1. Plus the second one times the derivative of the first. What's the derivative of e to the negative x? E negative e to the negative x. Negative e. So once again, I'm going to uh, distribute. So this is going to be actually minus x e to the negative x, and this is going to be plus 2e to the negative x. Does that make sense? When I distribute that e to the negative x? Dan, am I going too fast? You good? Okay. Uh, you done? I see what I got. Yeah, the answer key is in there somewhere. Um, okay, are there some like terms that I can combine? Two e to the negative x and e to the negative x makes three e to the negative x. Okay, factor out an e to the negative x. That leaves me uh, three minus x there. Set that equal to zero. And what do I get? X equals three. So once again, I can make a really simple little sign chart. It only has one point, so it's not a big deal. Uh, pick a number. Zero. Zero. If you take zero and plug it into the second derivative, uh, this right here is going to be one. This is going to be three. 1 times 3 is 3, so that means it is concave up on this interval, concave down right there. And what is my point of inflection? 3, comma, yeah, plug it into the original equation. And the original equation way back here, uh, negative 2 e to the negative 3. So if I go negative 2 e to the negative 3, I'm going to write that as negative 2 over e cubed. Okay? Yeah, it's right there, yeah. Uh, just leave it like that. Okay. Okay? Done that. Yeah, so that's the big one. Yes, yeah, so we can skip 66 because you guys get the idea, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, what do I have to do? All right? You guys done? Oh, no. With? I need some help. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ben.